time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, three trades. Ben Lichtenstein taking us here through the charts to take us through the trades. Jessica Inskip, Director of Product and Education at Options Play. Great to see you both. A great market over time recently here on Schwab Network as well. Jessica, what's your big picture these days? How are you feeling about the market? Absolutely. So lovely to see you again, Nicole. You know, I, I really expect to pull back. We have been on the longest run since the great financial crisis without a 2% pullback within the market. So we are certainly overdue for a pullback. I like to see this rotation out of technology and certainly looking for broader participation. I think we're headed for some volatility as we get into campaign season and we'll hear more about platforms and understand that. And then maybe even set up for a rally after that. But a lot really depends on the inflation interest rate picture but short term i like what i'm seeing thus far all right so you do expect some sort of pullback and i wonder where the opportunities will be if you'll step in and be buying things ibm's around uh 76 77 dollars today some of your thoughts on ibm Absolutely, Nicole. We talked about IBM so many times, and I feel like we talk about AI all too much, even in the early innings. But nonetheless, it's still a story. Data is the new currency when it comes at least to AI. And there's certainly opportunities when there is a pullback, like I'm seeing within IBM. They have data infrastructure is one of the, the largest and fastest growing subsectors that there is of software, and it's inclusive of data lakes, databases, pipelines, analytics, software. It all facilitates data management process and analysis and it's definitely a a migration from the public cloud is enduring that growth driver so there is a very big market increase that we're going to see within the database management systems about 80.14 billion in 2023 that's expected to grow 13.6 to reach about 136 billion in 2027 so there is lots of growth for data infrastructure ibm holds about 7.3 percent of market share they also have those guardrails that are put into place so if you're that company that's looking to build those large ai models so it's certainly one of the opportunities outlined Understood. Okay, so as I said, around 176.84 right now, 94. Um, some of your thoughts, Ben. Let's take a look at the chart and, and what Jessica is saying, too. Yeah, just shy of 177 right now and seeing some nice gains to begin the week here. I wanted to just uh, look at a few different time frames, Nicole, and across all three, you're going to see a bit of a bullish pattern that kind of uh, meets up with the fundamental uh, narrative that Jessica just laid out. So I like this one. It's been rallying off the October lows. Jessica spoke to the strength we've seen in the broader market, and we're also seeing that play out here as well. Taking a look at IBM, first and foremost, as I mentioned, some of the uh, strength we've seen off the end of last week lows all the way up to just shy of 179 today. Now, you guys know I like to look for these areas of value to help us determine trend, and it's pretty easily identifiable here, right? You've got a bottom left, a top right. We're trending higher, simply put, but not only do these help us determine trend, but they help us determine when that's no longer valid because we establish this kind of staircase type pattern to the upside and we balance around 169, broke out, went sideways around 173, broke out again to begin the week. And actually it looks like we've gone a bit more sideways here. As I prepared this chart for the show, we were in a vertical phase to the upside here. So we were seeking value higher. It does look like we're establishing it. We'll call it around the 177 level. So again, uh, every $4, interesting how that happens, right? Uh, in a very systematic fashion. Let's move on away from the five minute candle chart because I always say tough to trade that, that short term time frame, right? Um, let's take a look and add a little bit of time on here. I've got a 30 minute candle chart. You're gonna see a similar depiction though. Bottom left, top right and areas of value that continue to move higher. So we're going back to when the stock was trading around 163. That was uh, beginning of June. And then you can see three areas of value. You can also see that vertical phase that we transitioned into. And then again, time will tell. It does though look like we've become a bit more overlapping and rotational. You can see those bars kind of stacking up sideways tight pattern, which appears to be uh, establishing itself here. So again, that supports the bullish narrative, right? That, that we are getting a, a lift here. And just every time you establish value at a higher and higher level, you again, sort of reestablish or re-solidify that working assumption that 
we're trending higher. It's pretty basic. Similar pattern on a four-hour candle chart. Now I've gone all the way back to the October lows. I mentioned the stock's been on the move higher. I did want to point to this uh, a sell-off we saw from 199, almost 200, all the way back down to this 160 level. This is not what the bulls wanted to see by any means. But remember, we talked about the staircase-type pattern that plays out on the way up. So every time you form a new area of balance, you're constantly referencing that prior area. So while we were range-bound and contained around that 190 level, what were you referencing? 162. We got down there, we tested it, but we held above. So I sort of widened this out and sort of looked at that as just range extension. A couple different ways of looking at this one right now. Again, not what the Bulls wanted to see here, Nicole, but not necessarily all out lost either in this situation. Okay, thank you for that, Ben. And Jessica, you said uh, names like Oracle, Microsoft, Amazon are in a similar space. Um, how so? Yeah, they absolutely fall within that category because of the cloud infrastructure that's offered through Azure and AWS. And since there is this move over to the cloud that's part of data infrastructure, they actually have the largest market share of that. However, IBM is still emerging. It's older. IBM is an opportunity now, but so is Microsoft and Amazon and Oracle falling into that category. So great, great question there, Nicole. All right. All right. And then uh, for earnings, we saw um, Salesforce fall off. But um, how are you feeling about this name? And Einstein GPT. Yep. Yeah, we certainly did see a sell off with Salesforce. Salesforce falls into the same category, just utilizing the data infrastructure with application. And they're already a preferred enterprise vendor because they've been integrated in the procurement process with a lot of those large companies before this AI push and shareholder pressure. And they've met shareholder needs or the needs of their clients via Einstein J GBT, to your point. So it's a key player in the generative AI space and they're simplifying data for the sales process. And the sales pipeline is key to growing and expanding revenues for companies. So this is something that I expect those CapEx and operation dollars even to spend bleeding from technology budgets. So any fall in CRM is certainly a, a buying opportunity. And from an options perspective, might I add, selling cash secured puts with the intention to buy the underlying security when we're in a period of consolidation or even falling can inflate volatility, which means we'll have a increased premium, which allows you to buy the stock at a discount. But it's a way to play the stock while being neutral short term, but bullish long term. Yeah, and they've also announced that the annual meeting of stockholders on uh, June 27th. So that's uh, this Thursday. So we'll be watching for that as well. So buying on dips here. Some of your thoughts, Ben. Yeah, we are seeing a little bit of recent weakness. I like the idea to buy on dips, though, at least in terms of the really long term uh, trend, which still remains intact to the upside. And we're testing a key support area. We could actually see a nice little lift off here if this holds. It appears to be. Let's get into the charts. First and foremost, as mentioned, not what the bulls were looking for in terms of the short term. I started off here with a uh, hourly look at some of the price activity we've seen since the hives to begin the month of March, end of uh, uh, February. We have around 320. Look at this 318. You can see on the way down, lower highs, lower lows, top left, bottom right. Again, you could describe it a few different ways, but simply put, this is not a great chart uh, for those that are uh, looking to establish here a bit of a trend higher because it has been lower right simply put value has been on the move lower 305 280 and then it's most recently around 230 so again until we get above 280 uh on this time frame you're seeing a little bit of weakness here again an hourly candle chart so let's move away from this because uh, i wanted to show you another situation where again not necessarily what the bulls want to see because this selling as you take a look at the daily candle chart and the breach of 280 uh, invalidated this longer, this, this intermediate trend to the upside here in terms of the daily candle chart. We always talk about, again, these areas of consolidation that form on the way up. That's why I like this method of looking through price through this lens of auction market theories, concepts, the principles that it helps us see trend, but also when it's no longer present, right? It's not something as a trader that you've done wrong. If you're long a market and, and it continues or it doesn't continue to trend higher, it's just the market's reversed. And in this case, we saw one. Look at this. We were balancing 260, 280, 305, all the way up here. And then look at this. We started to take out these key areas that were established on the way up. So we've rolled over. Now, step one more, step back with me one more time because I mentioned that I, I do like this one in terms of a longer term play. And I do think that we're testing a key area of support here, right? 
right around this 220 level. Nicole, we've talked about this multiple times. Testing in a very mature balance area, the middle of the range, oftentimes can provide that catalyst here that the bulls are going to be looking for. If we do get liftoff off this 220 level, open up a door for a retest of 318. All right, thank you for that. Um, let's get to FCX if we look at Freeport Macron and when we look at this one, Jessica, we've thought about some of these commodities that have been running up and hitting some highs, but this one, even though it's been a little choppy lately, has been over six months up 21%. Some of your thoughts on, on Freeport Macron. Yeah, that it has, you know, every iteration of AI, the chips even spanning to NVIDIA and shareholder pressure creates grid pressure. It's a byproduct of that AI usage is the increase of utility usage, if you will. And that demand spans beyond artificial intelligence even. It's, it's inclusive of EV creation and adoption. There is a lot of grid pressure from the energy transition, but also AI. And there's lots of stats that I can give you to, to back that up. But the point of that is that is an emerging headwind that is occurring within this AI narrative that is overtaking the market. And anytime we see a headwind, we certainly want to find who is a tailwind or who is a beneficiary of that. FCX from the commodity perspective, because copper is needed for both creating AI and, and that EV creation and adoption process, this is certainly an, an opportunity. We might be in the early innings of a bullish cycle and continuation. So any pullback in these is certainly an opportunity to buy in. And again, utilizing those 45 at the money uh, cash secured puts. Right, all right. Thank you for that. Uh, let's get some final words here from Ben Lichtenstein. Yeah, Jessica said maybe in the early innings, I'd argue this has been a home run for the Bulls for a while now. I mean, uh, taking a look here across multiple time frames here, Nicole, you're going to see a bullish pattern playing out uh, for all three that I broke down. I wanted to start first and foremost with a five-minute candle chart recently rallying up to, well, 51, just shy of. And you can see it was uh, around this time last week. I mean, we were trading around 46, 47. So a solid move up here again for stock. Uh, that today you can see is adding on another 1%. Just sticking with that idea that we like to look for these areas of consolidation to help us determine which way trend is moving and then help us uh, see if we reverse it, right? So we are bouncing around 47 last week. Into the end of uh, uh, last week, we rally up Friday, balance out around 49. Look at this, a vertical phase, which appears to be losing some momentum here, right? So the bull's going to look for something a little bit more overlapping and rotational to occur up here. They want to see us hold above this 49 level, but this is really just range extension at this point. So really the real line in the sand on the five-minute candle chart is a $47 level. Let's move away from the more intraday. I just wanted to look at some of the recent rally we've seen. And then I wanted to step into a more intermediate as we go from a five minute to a one hour candle chart, because this could be providing a really good opportunity to participate to the upside here in this longer term trend. Testing a lower extreme of a range in a bullish pattern. Again, an hourly candle chart shows exactly what I'm talking about here, where value has been moving higher. You can see these areas where the market pauses and kind of regains composure and then continues along the trajectory to the upside. Most recently, again, balancing around 51. Testing a lower extreme, holding above 45. I mean, there's multiple uh, things that are just screaming bullishness here, uh, the way I see it. Hey, get through this 51 level. Again, we open up a door for a retest of 55, 56. Now, in our last example, CRM, we were talking about that weekly candle chart, and I talked about that trampoline kind of effect, something I've been really watching closely over the last few months, Nicole. And look, we saw that here play out right around that $37 level. And again, look at that big move up. What do we do? We get that retest that I said the bulls want to see in CRM. It was the highs from uh, the fall of uh, 2021 into the beginning of 2022, and we're holding this upper level. So what we're seeing here is a, a breakout to the upside. And sometimes, in this instance, the separation is really easily identifiable. Sometimes these balance areas are a little bit more overlapping. And so it wouldn't surprise me, again, to see something uh, rotational establish itself around this $52 level. But a bullish pattern across the board, all three time frames we looked at here, Nicole. All right. Thank you. Jessica, a quick final thought. Absolutely. It's certainly going to be an interesting market, but I'm looking for that pullback. But I still believe in that AI narrative. We've got a market cap heavy S&P 500. So if rallies are tech inclusive. Thank you, Jessica Inskip, Ben Lichtenstein. Good to see you. Thank you.